In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Silent Spearcaller build. This is a New Game Plus build that focuses on the use of the Death Ritual Spear as well as using stealth mechanics. So first of all, let's talk about the Death Ritual Spear. Obviously, this is the spear we're using for this build. It is the namesake, and it's a spear you don't get until very, very late in the game, so I think this is uh, much more of a New Game Plus weapon than it is a New Game weapon. You could use it in a New Game for probably the last 10 to 15% of the game, depending on what you've done. So it is possible to make this an end game build as well, but I don't think you would use it all that often. And why this weapon is so potent is its weapon skill, Spear Caller Ritual, which essentially summons a bunch of spirit spears out of the sky in a large AoE radius that deal 100% magic damage that absolutely hit like a freight train, especially if you have a big target because each spear can hit that target, increasing the damage that you deal. And you can wipe out packs of enemies this way very easily or tough to kill enemies or large bosses. It's just a very versatile skill that doesn't cost a ton of FP and hits very, very hard. Now, the crux of this weapon is that Dexterity is its primarily scaling attribute, and Dexterity increases its physical damage, but does not increase the damage of Spear Caller Ritual. Intelligence does, and the weapon has extremely poor intelligence scaling. So if you want to get the most damage out of your martial melee attacks, you're going to increase Dexterity. If you want to get the most damage out of Spear Caller Ritual, you're going to increase intelligence. And if you want somewhere in the middle, you would increase both of these attributes. So what I've done here is I've essentially put all my points into intelligence, just meeting the minimum requirements in strength and dexterity. And there are a couple reasons for that. First, obviously, is to increase the damage of Spear Call Ritual. This is the way to get the most damage out of it. But secondly, in order to increase our sorcery damage, you're going to get more damage out of your sorceries, obviously, if you have 80 intelligence rather than 40. So this is a good way to do that. And having over 60 intelligence will let us use the Carrion Regal Scepter, and I'll explain why that's important in just a second as well. But the other thing is that we're playing this build as sort of a stealthy build. We're using Unseen Form. We're using the Black Knife Armor, which muffles our footsteps. So the concept with this build is that you're sort of sneaking up on enemies, catching the drop on them, and then using Spear Call Ritual or casting Night Comet or attacking with your spear. You have 110 critical rating with the spear, meaning if you do backstabs, you're going to deal more damage than a spear that has 100. So you're going to get a lot more damage out of your backstabs as well kind of making it work better for a stealth build, in my opinion. So we're also using the Carrion Regal Scepter here, and this is to get the most damage possible out of Night Comet when we're casting it, because we have the Staff of Loss in the left hand when we're casting this spell, giving us the extra 30% damage, and then the better Sorcery Scaling of Carrion Regal Scepter in our right hand. So this is going to allow us to just absolutely melt things with Night Comet when we need it. We're using Spear Call Ritual to kind of handle AoEs and big enemies, and then you can use Night Comet if you just want to pick off a single target from far away, or if you need to like range down a boss where Spear Call Ritual just isn't going to be, you know, good enough to get it done. Maybe they're too aggressive. And why I like the Carrion Regal Scepter here, besides the fact that it has fantastic sorcery scaling, is because of its weapon ability, spinning weapon. It works really, really well in this build because we have the Shard of Alexander in this build in order to increase the damage of Spear Call Ritual. It's also going to affect spinning weapon. And sometimes when you're casting and an enemy gets up on you, you don't have anything but your two staffs equipped. A well, spinning weapon is your melee solution to this problem, and it absolutely hits like a truck with the way we're set up because you have Shard of Alexander, you have Ritual Sword Talisman, you have Magic Scorpion Charm. All these things boost the damage of this as well. So it's an absolutely great pairing with this. And then again, we have the Staff of Loss here to boost the damage of Night Comet or Night Shard if you're using that as well, which you can for this build. And you can upgrade it or not. If you upgrade it, allows you to cast Night Shard or Night Comet from the left hand while you have the spear out for less damage than you would with Carrion Regal Scepter. But it still gives you a ranged option when you might just need to do a little bit of damage to something, which is nice. If you don't upgrade it, you're just going to have it out when you're casting with Carrion Regal Scepter. It's up to you what you want to do here. So when it comes to armor for this build, I'm using the Black Knife set here. And there's really two points to this. First, I like the style of this. If you're playing sort of a stealthy character, Black Knife sort of fits the theme in my opinion. But also because it muffles your footsteps... And when combined with Unseen Form, that means they can't see you, they can't hear you very well. This allows you to sneak up on enemies much more easily than if you're just using one or of these two things. So that allows us to get the drop on enemies and critically strike them or get spells cast. But if you were really min-maxing this build, in my opinion, because we have so much endurance, you would use a much heavier armor set and you would replace the Bull Goat's Talisman, which we're using here with the three talismans I just mentioned, in order to hit the 51 poise breakpoint so you can tank through a hit while you're attacking or casting a spell. But instead, you would use much heavier armor with better poise and replace the Bullgoat's Talisman with Crepus' Vile in order to muffle your footsteps, but then still have more protection and more poise from heavier armor. So if you want to min-max, I suggest going that way. But if you want to be more stylish and kind of stealthy looking with your armor, then you can go the way we're doing here, and it's just fine. 
And as I mentioned, the other three talismans that we're using are Shard of Alexander in order to increase the damage of Spirit Color Ritual and also Spinning Weapon. Also using Ritual Sword Talisman to increase all our damage by 10% when we're at max health. This is all types of damage, which is great. And then finally, the Magic Scorpion Charm to increase our magic damage. Our regular attacks deal magic damage. Our Spear Call Ritual is 100% magic damage. Our spells are magic damage, so that affects that really well. So when it comes to spells, again, I have Unseen Forum. This is going to make you invisible for a little while. Um, you're not completely invisible. It's not like enemies will never see you, but it does help with stealth, allowing you to get behind enemies more easily if you know what you're doing. It takes a little bit to get used to exactly how stealth works in this game, in my opinion. It's not like you can just use Unseen Forum and this setup and you can run right up to enemies and backstab them and no one ever sees you or anything. But what I find is that if you're careful, if you play like a stealthy nature and you have these things, it's much more easy to get critical attacks. And sometimes when enemies see that you've killed an enemy near them, they'll come over, but they generally don't know where you are. They just know that something happened. So this allows you to like chain backstab or chain spellcast a lot of time, just making it really much more easy to play a stealthy style of gameplay. We also have Night Comet here. This is great for certain fights where Spear Call Ritual just isn't going to get it done or melee attacks aren't going to get it done. Deals incredible damage. You can charge this up for extra damage. You can put Godfrey Icon on as well for a Talisman. Play some like Bull Ghost for certain boss fights if you just want to get more damage out of that charged cast as well. And then Night Shard if you want to put in this build is just good for like weaker enemies or not when you, know, when you want to conserve FP because Night Comet is quite expensive. And lastly, we have Terra Magica, which increases your magic damage if you're standing inside of it for about 30 seconds or so. This is going to apply to your attacks that deal a lot of magic damage, but not completely. It's going to try apply to Spear Call Ritual, which is 100% magic damage, and your spells, which are 100% magic damage. So this works really, really well. If you can fight inside this during a boss fight, whether you're meleeing or if you're using spells, spinning weapons, 100% magic damage, anything you do inside this is going to hit like an absolute truck. So try and fight inside this during boss fights if you can. So when it comes to attributes for this build, we have 50 Vigor, 30 Mind, 33 Endurance, 14 Strength, 20 Dexterity, 80 Intelligence, 7 Faith, and 9 Arcane. You don't need any Faith or Arcane for this build. Your values may vary depending on what class you are. I was an Astrologer, so that's why they are where they are, but you won't need either of these two attributes. When it comes to Vigor, we have kind of low Vigor for this build, in my opinion. You're not planning on getting hit much. You're playing stealthy, you're playing smart, you're ranging things down. So 50 Vigor is not bad. The downside to this is when you're in boss fights and stealth doesn't really play a role. Again, you're trying to range things down from far, so you're not going to get hit that much. But eventually, you'll probably want to get this up to 60, just to give you a little bit more leeway. You are using the Magic Scorpion Charm as well, which reduces your protection. So getting more health here is good. Mind is at 30 here. I would like this to be closer to 40, in my opinion, just because everything is so expensive with this build. Unseen Form isn't cheap. Terra Magic is not cheap. Night Comet's not cheap. Spirit Call Ritual isn't expensive, but it's not cheap. So you do go through a lot of FP with this build, and it'll alleviate some of that flask chugging you need to do if you can get this up to about 40 or so throughout the course of New Game Plus. And we have Endurance at 33 here. Originally, when I was putting this build together, I was using different armor that allowed me to light roll. So I was kind of going for that light roll with this build. But essentially, the Endurance Breakpoint here allows you to wear heavier armor, swap out the Bull Goat's Talisman for Crepus's Vial, which will still muffle your footsteps. And then you can switch out, you know, some heavier armor that's got better poison, better protection. You'd be more optimized. So that works really well here as long as you don't mind medium rolling. Additionally, Night Comet just chews through stamina casting the spell. So if you like to spam Night Comet, having extra endurance is really good. When it comes to strength and dexterity, again, I have the minimum requirements for the death ritual spear here. But I would just say that you're not going to get much more out of our 80 intelligence in terms of damage. You can take this up to 99 if you want to get more out of Spear Call Ritual and your spells, which is not a bad idea. But you can also crank Dexterity up here to get more physical damage with your regular Spear Attacks if you find you're using Spear Attacks regularly. I love the R2 attack of the Death Ritual Spear. It's sort of a swipe instead of a poke, which allows you to do a different damage type with this weapon compared to the thrust damage that it normally does. So that's really nice in case enemies are resistant to that type of damage. And it sweeps through multiple enemies, so... It's not a bad idea to take Dexterity up, and at some point after your Intelligence is maxed out, or even before if you find yourself using Melee more, you want to take Dexterity up to at least 50, probably 80 eventually. And just a couple final tips before I wrap up this video. If you're using the Flask of Wonders Physique, you're going to want the Magic Shroud and Cracktear. Obviously, this will further boost your magic damage. Spinning Weapon, Spear Call Ritual, your spells, your regular attacks all deal magic damage. So that is very, very beneficial. And the one that increases your stamina recovery, I always recommend in just about any build because this will allow you to get your stamina back, to cast spells faster, to dodge more, etc. 
So that's also a good pairing here. But you could use the one that increases intelligence if you want in order to get even more damage before you max out intelligence. And when it comes to great runes for this build, I really like Radagons for this build because after you get to 60 Vigor, 40 Mine, uh, 99 Intelligence, and 80 Dexterity, there's nothing really else you need for this build. You don't need Strength, you don't need any more Endurance, you won't need any more Mine, you won't need more Vigor. And Radagons is just going to give you FP, HP, and Stamina, which are all great for this build. Stamina helps with rolling, spell casting, HP keeps you alive, which you need more of, and FP obviously allows you to cast more easily. So that's a very good one for this build. It's not a super stat-hungry build like some builds are where Godric's would be a better pick, so I recommend using Radagons. That wraps up our video for the Silent Spear Caller. If you have builds you want to see in the comments still, if I still haven't gotten to the build you want to see for some reason, please let me know. I do read these comments, and I like making builds that you guys want to see. So let me know if in the comments below if you have any suggestions.